I'm Allison Uden with Micron, and today we're talking about arguably one of the biggest technology announcements in Micron history. It's called the Hybrid Memory Cube, and here to explain this technology, its significance, and the unusual partnership surrounding this announcement is Scott Graham with our DRAM Solutions Group. Scott, first, tell us a little bit about your involvement, your background in this project, why you're the key guy to be talking about the Hybrid Memory Cube, or HMC as we call it. Sure. So several years ago, we had uh, multiple engineering teams working together to try to come up with an idea on how do we innovate new technology, especially in the DRAM space, and try to come up with a technology that can uh, bring more value add back to the DRAM space. And so uh, these guys all sat together and, and worked diligently and, and came up with a, an incredible technology called Hybrid Memory Cube. And uh, basically, uh, it was so good that uh, we decided, that our executive teams decided that we should uh, create a, uh, essentially a mini business unit that would be responsible for the technology, ensuring that we enable it, that we can mass produce this technology, that we can bring it to market. And so therefore, they asked me to come in and, and become the general manager for this technology and this group and, and bring it to production. Well, what is HMC and what, what makes it so revolutionary? So hybrid memory is essentially, it is a logic layer base um, that has all of the memory control and then we have a simplified DRAM layer that we stack on top of that. And the stack can be anywhere from four DRAM slices to eight DRAM slices. And it's, it, what's incredible about the technology is the 3D aspect of it where we use through silicon vias to interconnect basically the DRAM layers and the logic layer. And by doing that, we're allowed to uh, have a technology that has high performance and uh, low energy. And um, it also consumes a much smaller footprint than, the nor than a normal DDR type of technology in a module form. So when we couple all those things together, then we really, b we've, we've basically taken a bunch of innovative pieces and then created one giant innovative piece in Hybrid Memory Cube. And where do you see it having the biggest impact? Well, the impact is, is uh, incredible across multiple markets. Uh, as we look at the industry itself and in high performance computing, networking, uh, all of the uh, applications that are requiring a tremendous amount of data, whether it's video data that's coming across the web or it's uh, you know, uh, various forms of information that is, that is coming into your iPhones, into your portable laptops, Wi-Fi, or even in super supercomputing environment where they're crunching numbers, uh, doing trades, and and doing things in the you know in the market that require a vast amount of data to come through these data centers and, and into these devices, and so hybrid memory cube, what that does is it breaks down the memory wall that is tr has traditionally been out there, and it uh, it really allows for a high performance computing uh, that has a lot of data that comes through it as well as it it uses less energy. So essentially what we're doing is we're, we're able to have the performance of a Ferrari per se and have the gas efficiency of a uh, Toyota Prius. And so for the first time ever, we've been able to do that with this type of technology. Also, perhaps for the first time ever, we've formed some interesting collaborations. At the beginning, I said we, this has sparked some unusual partnerships, including one with Samsung. Talk about that. Uh, very interesting. So uh, one of the, the creative things that we had to do with this technology is that the OEMs in, and the industry in general is, is not necessarily comfortable with betting a particular product line on a sole source of technology. And so Micron wouldn't wouldn't be as successful in taking this technology to more of a, a mass volume or mass production, uh, it would become more of a niche product. And, and when we sat down early on and decided that, you know, we want to take this and, and have this bring that value add back into the memory and really take this thing to market and have a very broad adoption in multiple applications, multiple segments. And so we realized that we had to partner up with someone who could also produce the technology and so therefore uh, we, we sat down with Samsung and we already had a cross-license agreement with Samsung uh, to begin with and so it made sense from Samsung's technical capabilities as well as that they had the financial means to be able to come up to speed quickly on this technology and then we can work collaboratively together in order to uh, bring the technology to market. 
While Samsung is certainly the biggest, they're not the only technology that we're working with on this project. Explain the consortium approach to HMC. Sure, so usually with, the, as, as everyone knows in memory, we typically uh, go to a, a standards association. JEDEC is the, is the main body that we standardize our memories and that allows all the memory suppliers to be able to uh, come together along with the OEMs and, and various enablers and create a standard that everyone can design to. And with, the, with this particular technology, we wanted to go to market very quickly. And so therefore, we felt that an outside consortium that uh, has a focused group of, of members, uh, those members today you know, are key developers that are really focused on networking segments and, and some high performance computing. And so we've, we've enlisted uh, Altera, Xilinx, and OpenSilicon, along with Micron and Samsung to be the developers that are founding this consortium. And then we'll bring on additional developers over time. And then uh, as well, we'll also invite adopters, which can be anybody in the industry that is interested in the technology to come in and have a, you know, an early preview to the spec. The, the consortium itself is, is really just a, you know, it's, a, it's an opportunity for us to come together and create that interface specification so that all of the uh, various enablers in the industry and OEMs can hook up to this technology. Now that you've announced this consortium, what are the next steps with all of the, the, the different players? So the next steps are that uh, we'll, we'll have the final developers uh, within the next month. We feel that we'll have that initial developer group established. And it'll be the five that I mentioned, and then some additional key OEMs. And what we're really interested in is having you know, the key industry leaders be part of the developers group who have the final say on the specification. And then we'll also open that invitation up. At that point, we'll open the invitation up to the adopters to come and join, which they will have an opportunity to provide some feedback and input into the specification. Uh, then we'll start having these, uh, these meetings on a monthly basis, very similar to the other standards, industry standards that are out there. And we'll, we'll get together and uh, meet face to face, go over the specifications, work out uh, all of the, the bugs that we need to work out and, and create an industry specification that we hope to deliver in 2012. Well, this is really exciting. I appreciate you giving us some additional insight into the hybrid memory cube and the partnerships that surround it. And we look forward to see where this goes in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Scott.